Ms. Mary Beth Leonard, United States Ambassador to Nigeria, has pledged her government's support to strengthen the capacity of women to advocate for laws and policies that will close gender gaps and provide better protection for Nigerian women. Ms. Leonard made the commitments at the ongoing Gender and Inclusion Summit organized by the Policy Innovation Center, an initiative of the Nigeria Economic Summit Group in Abuja. And during these elections, we will be working with local NGOs aiming specifically at reducing violence against women in politics and during the elections. And we will work to strengthen the capacity of women's groups to advocate for laws and policies that provide better protections for women. Elections also provide an opportunity for individuals not just to participate in the governmental processes of their country, but to hold officials accountable for their actions or for their inaction. Challenging candidates to share issues-based campaign strategies with the public is one way to hold officials to their word once they are in office. Reflecting on our work to connect the dots thus far, we know that there is hope. Recognizing the challenges women face, the United States is committed to promoting women's empowerment. We will continue to support Nigerian women in their efforts to have greater productivity, economic diversification, and income equality. We will continue to push for full implementation and enforcement of laws and regulations already enacted. Similarly, Ms. Katrina Liang, British High Commissioner to Nigeria, stressed the need to deal with social norms of religion and behaviors to execute the desired gender quality progress. There are social norms, um, religious norms, behavioral norms, which are used, frankly, as excuses for not making progress on gender equality. And we, I think all of us, must stand up and challenge those norms. Gender rights are basic human rights and everyone's entitled to them. So we must really safeguard progress and make sure that we don't backslide. For her part, the Deputy Director of Policy Innovation Centre, Dr. Osasui Dirisu, said the Policy Innovation Centre works to improve government policies and programs using lessons from social and behavioural policies. A lot of money is invested in implementing programs. Sometimes these programs are designed without the needs and understanding of the context, you know, situating the, the, the problem in context. We do a lot of work around strategy, program, regulatory, and policy design. I've been here today as part of our, the conversation we have around ensuring that the policy process is participatory and then we implement solutions and then we can evaluate, get our lessons learned so we can scale. We are here at the gender and inclusion summit, which is something that we hope to institutionalize and have an opportunity for stakeholders to come together once again to have real conversations about gender and advance the cause of improving gender equality in Nigeria. Senior Program Officer, Gender Equality Division Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, USA, stress the need to reduce gender inequality to achieve national development. If Nigeria reduce gender inequality in its labor market, in economic participation, and in political representation, the economy could grow on average by up to 1.25% and GDP could grow by $229 billion by 2025. The chairman, NESG, Mr. Niyu Yusuf, said the summit would set the stage for future engagements on closing gender gaps and creating an inclusive society. We will ensure that every idea and every recommendation from this summit will translate into a working roadmap for actions, the performance of Nigeria in the gender index rankings. And we will not rest until all our efforts translate into positive social change that we can use and that we all can see in the quality of our lives, such that girls and women experience quality life and gender inclusivity in a gender-balanced society.